Um, summer is hot in South Louisiana. It must be at least 100 degrees in the shade. I can't stay in the trailer because we only have one win the window unit set in the kitchen. And when Mom is home sleeping on the sofa after a long night's work like she is now, she makes me go outside. She wants the cool air all to herself on account of she's winning the bread and all. I'm sitting in the shade of Poppy's front porch trying to ignore the heat. Poppy's porch is like my own private treehouse without the tree. A soft green sofa backs up to the board and batten wooden wall, making a perfect spot for curling up with a good mystery novel. Today I'm reading a Nancy Drew book, The Hidden Staircase. Nan Nanny Rose bought me a whole set at the library book sale for one dollar. She knows I love to read and collect big words. Nanny Rose is Mama's oldest sister. Mama's mama named all her children flower names, Rose, Gardenia, Magnolia, and Wisteria. When Big Brother came along, Mama's mama couldn't think of a flower fitting for a boy, so she named him Spruce after the tree. We just call him Big Brother on account of his bigness. He was the youngest, but Mama says when he came out, he was 10 pounds, 6 ounces, and had cheeks like Creole tomatoes, so they've always called him Big Brother. Mama's mama is no longer with us. I do believe she went to heaven just in time to be my guardian angel. She passed when Mama was pregnant with me. Mama says that birth and Big Brother is what did her mama in. She says it weakened her mama's heart. Paul P. says it was blood cancer. I don't know who's right, and I don't bring it up anymore. They never will agree. My mama is number two in her family as the stair steps down. She smells strong and sweet like the flower of her name, Gardenia, but when she's mad, she gets hot and red like the red hibiscus. Mama's never been the same since her little sister, Wisteria, was killed two years ago outside the Lucky Spot Lounge. As I see it, that was no lucky spot for my Aunt Wisteria, who was just innocently standing in the exact wrong place. Mama and some of her friends made a cross and placed it at the side of the building. It's decorated with teddy bears and fake flowers. Mama cries every spring when she sees the wisteria bloom. She says those drooping purple blossoms are lowering their heads in honor of her sister who was so sweet. Poppy hums around the corner in his red wheelchair scooter he got from our neighbor Tommy's granddad after he died. Poppy loves that scooter. He says he has found freedom with his new wheels. He scoots down to the Piggly Wiggly almost every day to pick up one thing or another. He puts the packages in the basket in the front, straightens his little American flag, and scoots on home. Paul P. says, hey, little sweet blessing, want to take a ride to the Piggly Wiggly? Your mama needs some groceries. I just got to the suspenseful part in my novel, so I just nod, still reading, and say, mm-hmm. Then come on, let's go, Paul P. says, with the enthusiasm of a new spring day. He's immune to the heat. He says he's lived this way all of his life. I bookmark my place with a piece of junk mail I find on the porch and hide the book under the cushions. I don't want Sassy to eat it for lunch, which she has been known to do when she is bored. Sassy is a mixed breed yellow dog that came walking down the road, Sassy as you please, ten years ago on the same day I was born. I climb up on my bike and try to keep up with Paul P. as he speeds up on ahead of me. I hear the chirping of the mockingbird. The Mockingbird is a copycat. He sings all kinds of other birds' tunes. He doesn't have a tune of his own. I can't say I have much use for the Mockingbird ever since one made a nest in the jasmine vine next to the chicken coop, which nearly drove Blue crazy. When that Mockingbird's chicks were hatched, you could hear such a commotion. That bird would go after anything that came near. I say the thing was stupid to put its nest so close to a chicken coop to start with. I catch up with Paul P. The Piggly Wiggly isn't a far ride, but I'm covered in sweat by the time we arrive. Paul P. promises to buy me one of those fancy flowered wa waters in a plastic bottle. We gather up our purchases, a bunch of bananas, some grapes, Blue's favorite, a head of iceberg lettuce, a loaf of Evangeline made white bread, Peter Pan smooth peanut butter, my favorite, and two cold bottles of water from the refrigerator near the checkout. We stand in what may be one of the shortest lines, but it certainly is the liveliest. You want me to continue? Yeah, let's finish. <laughs> the only page and a half more. Go okay. Yeah. Yes. There are, <laughs> there are two black girls in short jean cutoffs and tank tops in the front taking their own sweet time checking out. One of them has a tattoo on her shoulder of a heart around the word princess, just like the sparkly pink earrings I found in my desk last May wrapped up in a paper <laughs> towel. My best friend Tori told me it was Josh Babineau who put them there, but I know it was Tori trying to trick me into thinking Josh liked me or something. Tori likes her drama. I kind of wish I was wearing those earrings today, but I have on my gold loops to match the stretch gold belt I have on my belly. 
That woman with the tattoo gives me a sideways glance. She doesn't seem to notice that her fly is open. It's hard not to look, but I'm too shy to tell her to X, Y, Z. Behind Paul P. and me are two older black women. Paul P. turns around in his scooter to talk to Miss Ella May, a friend from way back. Miss Ella May wears an American flag that flows in and out of her lumpy middle across her white t-shirt. The 4th of July is a few weeks away, but Miss Ella is ready. Her black wig is in a hip style with red hair pieces sprouting like fireworks from the top of her head. She looks like the 4th of July herself. <laughs> Hello, Ronald. How you been? Why, how are you, Miss Ella May Delahousie? Haven't seen you in a while. I got some vegetables coming up, so I'll be by with some of your favorites. Why, the best thing about summer is your veggies. I can't wait. Come soon, okay? Miss Ella May. AJ, you got some cleaning to do in my truck. You and your friends took mud in last night. I couldn't even drive it for all the mud on the tires. I had to get a ride over here from Miss Irita. AJ looks down, continuing his checking out. Beep, 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 and ignores his mama. The tattooed lady turns around and shouts over the top of my head. There was some hot mess going on around your house yesterday. What mess you talking about? You going to see to it. You hear me, son? Soon as you get off, I want that truck good as new. No mess at my house. Ain't that right, AJ? Ella May continues with her rant. It's a ping pong ball match. I just wish somebody would tell the tattooed woman about her fly. My face is turning <laughs> red for her. Finally, the tattooed girls move on and it's our turn. Ella May's friend speaks low to her, but I overhear. Look how AJ waddles. He's so fat. Your boy loves to eat. He does. I hear the affection in her voice and feel a bit sorry for AJ. He looks over and hands me a small brown bag with a fresh chocolate chip cookie inside. I do believe the smell of warm chocolate is one of the best scents on earth. When we get outside, Poppy puts the plastic bags in his basket and hands me a bottle of water. That sweet flavor of kiwi strawberry cools me off quite nicely. <laughs>